um, connecting with the office the Office of Veteran Affairs. So I just wanna let you know, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And um, a copy of this session will be available via video online in case you know other people who might wanna see it. Thanks, and I'm going to um, turn the session over to Stephanie Hugendorn from the Graduate Studies team. Thank you so much, Vice Provost Godley. Um, my name is Stephanie. I'm a member of the Grad Studies team. I will be uh, emceeing our orientation today, our extended orientation. And our first speaker is Morgan Pierce, the president of the Graduate and Professional Student Government. Thank you so much, Morgan, for kicking us off um, on our student life orientation today. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. I'm going to share a PowerPoint. Um, let me get that started. Okay, so welcome everyone. It's great to see you all here today, um, or at least you can see me. Uh, so I am the president of the Graduate and Professional Student Government. I'm a third year PhD student in the Department of History. Um, and I um, just wanna take about five minutes today to um, tell you a little about the Graduate and Professional Student Government and what we can kind of do for you. So we are um, the student government for all graduate and professional students at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, primarily, we provide services for students and um, we do a lot of event programming for our students. So um, our job is to connect Pitt students with administrators. So we really act as that bridge between our regular student body um, and all of the lovely people who make uh, the hard decisions for us. So um, you can get involved a lot of ways. We have monthly meetings that are open to the public. You're welcome to attend. Those happen the second Tuesday of every month. Um, and then one of some of the great things we offer are uh, the GPSG travel grant program. So if you are attending a conference, um, we offer travel grants for that. If you are presenting, we can help reimburse you for your registration. Um, we can help with your um, plane ticket costs or um, any sort of travel costs um, that might go along with that. So I'll drop some links in the chat in just a moment so that you can have access to all of these things. Um, we also do advocacy and professional development grants. Um, so they're established to provide assistance to graduate and professional students um, who wanna participate in advocacy conferences. Um, so not just strictly academic based conferences where you might present a paper or, or a, um, a poster. Um, students are eligible for up to $2,000 to cover the cost of expenses. So please take advantage of that money um, because otherwise it just sits there and we love giving out money. Uh, we also, at the end of the year, recognize our students. It's one of the other big things that we do as the graduate professional student government. We want to recognize the accomplishments um, and the service of our graduate students. So that is an award that we give out at the end of the spring semester. It comes with a stipend, um, as well as some lovely recognition things that include a dinner, um, a small statue or token of our appreciation. It kind of changes year to year, but we always make sure you get something nice. Um, we also um, provide legal assistance to students. So we pay uh, for this service. It's available to all graduate, graduate professional students as well as undergrads. I will additionally link this in the chat as well so that you can see how to um, sign up for that if it's something that you're interested in. It is a completely free service to our students. So if you are looking for specific resources, please contact GPSG. Our office is on the eighth floor of William Pitt Union. It is where I am sitting right now. Um, you can email us at gpsg at pitt.edu. Um, you can email me specifically at president.gpsg at pitt.edu, um, or you can give us a call. We usually have someone in the office, so we are here for whatever you need. Um, we also have uh, are in contact with a lot of student organizations because they are represented on our board. So um, I will additionally put that in the chat in just a moment so you can see a little bit more about that. Um, and if you want to know more about our events, um, we have a lot of excellent events. We have two coming up, um, one of which is the uh, we are attending a Pirates game at the end of this week. 
And then our next big event is going to be our coffee hour, um, our second one of the semester on October 8th. So if you want more details on that, please follow our social media um, and you can find the uh, all of the details when and where as well as sign up for those events. So I'm going to stop sharing now and I will drop those things in the chat as our next presenter um, begins theirs. So thank you. Thank you so much, Morgan, for um, all that good information on uh, the graduate student government. Um, in just a second, up next, we have Jason Miller from Campus uh, Recreation. And I did just want to take a minute and uh, mention that we will have time for Q&A at the end of this session. You can, um, as someone, if a speaker is presenting and you think of a question, go ahead and drop it in the uh, Q&A and we will answer your questions live. Um, at the end of this. So Jason. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as mentioned, my name is Jason Miller. I'm the Assistant Director with Campus Recreation. Uh, the way I like to describe Campus Rec is we are the sports, fitness, and recreation on campus. So we're kind of like the athletic directors, but for the entire campus community, we service undergraduate and graduate students as well as faculty and staff. And um, just to give a brief summary of what we offer, we, we provide access to uh, fitness facilities and recreational facilities. Um, just to name a few off the top of my head, we have the Barrel Student Recreation Center, which is located in the Peterson Event Center. We have Trees Hall, which is at the very top of the hill. We have Belfield Hall, which is across the street from um, the Heinz Chapel. We have a small space within the William Pitt Union. We have the Sports Dome, which is the very, very back of campus, which many people don't even know exist. Um, and then we also have a, a hodgepodge of other spaces throughout campus. Um, we also offer a lot of programs, so uh, such as intramurals. So if you're looking for, um, if you're looking to, to, to form a team with some peers or colleagues, then intramural sports is the way to go. We offer the, the traditionals such as um, volleyball, soccer, football, um, and some, some different one-off type tournaments. If you're, um, if you're more of a competitive uh, athlete, and let's say you competed in, in uh, undergrad or even in high school, we also have a competitive club sports program. And we have um, 60 to 70 competitive clubs that are student run and they compete against other schools. So intramurals is kind of um, competing against individuals that are on campus and they form their own team. Club sports, that's where you're, you're training and competing um, and preparing to, to go against other, you know, other schools that have uh, clubs as well. In addition to the intramurals and club sports, we also have group fitness classes. Um, anything from yoga to Zumba to boot camp, we, I think we're offering you know, 30 or so different classes right now through our group fitness program. Also tied to our group fitness program is our uh, wellness uh, component, which includes wellness consultations and personal training. So if you're looking to connect with an individual and, and talk through uh, goal setting or even um, working to, to put together some sort of training plan for yourself, then we have personal trainers and a, and a wellness coordinator that can help you out with that. And then from time to time, we offer special events um, through campus, and uh, we typically post those on our, um, on our website and our social media. So I think the, the, the one resource I would love to share with those of you that are interested in learning more about campus recreation is our website, and I'll share that in the chat. That's uh, rec.pit.edu, and we keep everything on there from our facility schedules to special announcements to event information to registration info, really everything that you need to know about campus rec and what we have to offer, and also what's happening, you can find on the site there. Um, you can also reach out to me if you have any specific questions. My email is jtm at pit.edu, and I'm happy to um, go into detail on any of those things that I previously mentioned. So I'll share this link, and then I will uh, hand it back over to Stephanie. Thank you. Thanks, Jason, for those good campus rec um resources. Um, next, I'd like to welcome Eric Schruckers from the uh, Center for Creativity. They have lots of um, really interesting programming for graduate and professional students. Thanks. Thanks, Stephanie. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen because I have a few slides to go through with you. 
The Center for Creativity is a university unit that is dedicated to connecting you with your creativity and also to um, connecting you with others who have an interest in making. And that's creative making of all kinds. It could be art, music, apps, um, writing, anything that you're interested in doing. If it's creative, we're interested in helping you to do and to connect with other people who do it. Um, so I have a few slides here because I would like to share a couple of our spaces that we have on campus. Um, the first is our workshop space, which is inside the university store on 5th. That's open through the week and offers a little bit of something for everyone. So we have musical instruments down there. We have a play wheel and art supplies. We have a 3D printer and a laser cutter a sewing machine, typewriters, and a whole lot more for you to come down and explore. All of our spaces, as I'm talking to you about them, know that they are free um, and open to you. They're open to everyone at Pitt, regardless of department, course of study, or program. And they're also open to students, faculty, and staff. So we really want to connect people across some of those divides that usually can exist in a university and bring everyone together. So um, the workshop is on the lower level of the university store. Our new space, the Text and Context Lab, is a partnership that we've developed with the university library system. And it's located on the third floor of Hillman Library. It's open every day from 1 to 8. And it contains pretty much everything you would want to do with book, print, and text art. You can make a book in the text and context lab entirely from scratch. You can make the paper, you can print on it, you can bind it. Um, everything that you might want to do related to book and text art, we have in that space. We were supposed to open in April of 2020, but we couldn't due to um, circumstances, let's say beyond our control. Um, so this is the first semester that we're actually open in that space and we'd love to see you drop in and find out more about it. We also have a virtual spoke to the Center for Creativity called the Pittsburgh Lens. And that's dedicated to showcasing the creativity of Pitt and the Pittsburgh region through media production. So we do things like our One Minute Film Festival, which is coming up in October. We do something called the Pitch Initiative, um, in which we ask folks to submit their stories, whether they're screenplays, articles, essays, short stories, novels, whatever you have, and um, offer the opportunity to take that process through possibly into production. Um, we recently produced a documentary called Chasing COVID, which you can see on our website, um, about the Center for Vaccine Research's um, efforts to develop a COVID vaccine. And so through these three spokes, we offer all kinds of opportunities to get involved and to get involved both with your own making and connecting with other people who are interested in doing these things. We're especially interested in bringing together creators of different kinds. So um, folks who are interested in writing can connect with those who are interested in art or music or filmmaking and, and get people together and hopefully launch some exciting things from them. We also offer all kinds of workshops and special events throughout the year, which you can find on our website, which is creative.pit.edu, um, including things like open mics, which we'll have our first one of in October. And so you are welcome to come to our spaces um, and explore what we have, to come to um, any of our events that we have, either to participate or to watch. Um, and as I said, we're free and open to everyone. So we welcome you. We hope we'll see you soon in one of our spaces or at one of our programs. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. Um, I was hoping you would have an update on the, on the printing press. I've been um, really curious about that. So that is uh, a really great thing that the Center for Creativity has been able to offer. Um, so next up, I'd like to uh, bring out Annabelle Klippinger, who is from Pitt Arts and has um, lots of great opportunities to share with us. Annabelle? Hello, 
Hello. My my video is not getting getting back on. Hold on a second. Here we go. Can you see me? Cannot see you, but I can hear you. Okay. Let me see if. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, sometimes it just doesn't doesn't work. Um, so hello, I'm Annabelle Clippinger. I'm the director of Pitt Arts at the university. And um, I've been at the university for over 20 years at Pitt Arts. So it's been a it's been a delight the entire time. And I rather than do the slideshow, I thought I would um, talk to you a little bit about what's a we have for graduate and professional students at the university. Um, first of all, we have an incredible um, museum visits program that are totally free to our graduate and professional students. And there are seven museums that I'd like to um, tell you about. First is the Carnegie Museum of Art and Natural History in Oakland. Um, you can walk right over to see that museum. Um, all you need is your current Pitt, um, uh, Pittsburgh campus uh, ID with you so that you can get in. Um, I will tell you a little bit about some of the um, COVID restrictions that um, are playing out right now with museums as well. But first, let me tell you a little bit about them. Um, there is the Carnegie, uh, there's FIPS, uh, Conservatory and Botanical Gardens in, um, also in Oakland. Uh, and it probably you've maybe walked over there or already used um, the um, FIPS Conservatory. It's a great place to decompress when um, everything gets a little stressful. Go over there and just enjoy the plants, enjoy all the um, flowers. It, it's, it's just a beautiful place to visit. Um, the Carnegie uh, uh, Science Center is, uh, is another uh, one that you can visit if you have a scientific background and you wanna just enjoy the, what they have to offer there. You can also visit the Carnegie Science Center totally free uh, with, your, with your PID ID. Um, the Andy Warhol Museum, which is on the North um, Shore, um, more side, I'm sorry. And uh, you can visit there totally for free. Um, the Mattress Factory Museum of Installation Art. Uh, that is a, a program that, uh, I'm sorry, a museum that is about um, using space, light, and um, uh, sometimes sound. And it's just, you're entering into these spaces, uh, individual rooms. So it's a really unique place to visit. And um, that is on the north side. Uh, Soldiers and Sailors uh, Memorial Hall and Museum. Right now outside, you can view the dog tag exhibit. Uh, that is something to, to behold. So um, get over there and, and on, on their lawn and look at their um, um, dog tag exhibit from all, all different um, uh, wars of the, of the past. Uh, and the Heinz History Center down in the Strip District. All these are free with your PID ID. So um, make sure you get around. If you have a car, do it, or just you know check out the Port Authority and, and, and uh, take the bus there. The other thing that we have that's um, really nice for our um, graduate and professional students is the um, Cheap Seats Program, which is the Deeply Discounted um, Tickets Program. And um, oh, let me go back to the, to the museums. First of all, during COVID uh, times, uh, you should go to our website, which is pitarts.pit.edu and um, check out the codes for all these museums because they're time tickets for most of them at this time. So um, there's a code for each one so that when you put that code in, you know, when you go for the time tickets, it will allow you to go for free. So um, you need to visit our pit, our website for Pit Arts and um, look at the museum visits page 
to get all that information because of all the restrictions that are happening right now. Um, something like the Magic Secretary has um, a lot of different little hallways and what have you. So time tickets are really important. PIPS has a lot of uh, little paths. So time tickets are very important. So um, for all of those museums. So the other um, program that we have is Cheap Seats or the Deeply Discounted um, Tickets Program. Um, and right now um, you can buy these tickets um, on our website. Um, and by visiting the Cheap Seats um, page on our website. Uh, so we have the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, the Pittsburgh Ballet Theater, the Cultural Trust, the Opera, and more. But right now, they're sort of coming up all the time. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to mention also um, is they have COVID restrictions too. So you need to check out those individual COVID restrictions. But for the... Um, just to let you know, graduate and professional students, that um, they are asking you to either, you know, show a, a recent COVID um, negative test or proof of vaccination. Um, we're not doing this, they are doing it. And that masks uh, wearing is necessary. So before you, you know, sign up for those cheap seats, just realize that these are the things that they are asking you to do. Each one of those partners are asking you to do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annabelle. Um, next up, I'd like to welcome Chaz, who's going to speak about uh, pit serves and the pit, pan pit pantry. Hello, 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 can you hear me? All right. Yes, yes, we can. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. So glad to be here. Really honored to be here with you all today. Excited to uh, share a little bit of information about the uh, Office of Pit Serves as well as the Pit Pantry. Was gonna share my screen, but decided again not to do that. Just wanna have a conversation with you all a little bit about our work and our services. So the Office of Pit Serves is, is within the Division of Student Affairs and serves all students here uh, on our Oakland campus. The mission of Pit Serves, Pit Serves is a catalyst for students and communities to engage in action that creates impactful change. And our vision is to achieve resilient and equitable communities and inspire civically mandated individuals. Who we are, folks, is we are your community and civic engagement arm here uh, for students at the University of Pittsburgh. We want to connect you with communities of all types in order for you to engage with them in a variety of different ways. Uh, and our three areas of work are in area of sustainability, community development, and education. And what we do is we try to connect your passions, your interests, and your past experiences with community up and civic opportunities. So if you like to raise money for things and you're good at it, we'll connect you with areas of philanthropy. If you are an advocate and you wanna get involved in advocacy or politics or policy making, we'll support you with our policy and governance work. If you are a community organizing and you, you care about animals or mobilizing people for a collective effort, we have things in community organizing and activism. We have something here for everybody. You're gonna get a great education here at the University of Pittsburgh. The Division of Student Affairs as a whole creates opportunities for you all as students to, to be the best neighbors that you can be. And one area we really thrive here on is in this area of community and civic engagement. And that's where Pitt Serves comes in to support you. I mentioned the three arms, the education, sustainability and community development. So education, our area, you know, if you like working with kids, if you want to mentor, you want to tutor, you want to do participate in art as a creative means for young for kids. And these are kids pre-K through 12. Our office is where you want to come. We have a variety of opportunities for you to engage with students in traditional classroom daycare settings. The area of sustainability, this is where the pantry falls in. So if any student um, that is uh, an active student here at Pitt is battling any sort of food insecurity, our Pitt pantry is open and available. And I'll make sure to put that information into the chat as a resource, along with a few other links for you. 
but the, uh, they offer uh, walk uh, shop through service. So you can actually go through the pantry and grab items you want. We also have a contactless pickup option where a box will be left outside for you. And you'll just simply go and pick up that box with your dietary uh, restrictions uh, as part of that box as well. We also have produce. Uh, there's a produce day where folks can access free produce, fresh produce for, for our students and members of the pit community to enjoy. So the pit pantry provides a variety of food and basic need information and resources for all of our students. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that to, to you all. As well as our thrift store. Our thrift store serves as a model for sustainability to repurpose and reuse as well as recycle materials. The goal is to help things from hitting the landfill as much as possible. So a thrift store is just like a Goodwill or a Salvation Army store. We accept donations that are new or gently used. We, we work through that and then we resell those at a very low cost back out to the Pittsburgh community overall. So if you're thrifty, you're creative, you like you know those types of stores, check out our, our, our thrift store located in O'Hara Student Center. And the final thing I wanted to mention today was the community development. This is where fun and engagement really comes in hand, right? We have everything from picking up trash to repainting uh, uh, playgrounds to a gardening work to uh, all types of hands-on engagement opportunities through the arm of community engagement. Our major days of service, uh, which is coming up, Civic Action Week is our first one. I'll make sure to put that link in there as well. The goal of Civic Action Week, which takes place October 4th through the 9th, is to have dialogue that leads to action, deliberation that leads to better decision-making, and disruption that leads to innovation. So throughout Civic Action Week, we're gonna be challenging the Pitt community and the Pittsburgh community to really get involved. And this is available for faculty, staff, and students. There's lots of opportunities available through Civic Action Week that we wanna make sure that we encourage you to join. The Office of Pitt Serves is here to support you. We're located on the ninth floor of the William Pitt Union. Uh, I'll make sure to include some contact information as well as some very resourceful links for you. We have something in our office for everyone. And if we don't have it, we'll work with you to create it. Thank you so much for having me. And I'll pass it back to Stephanie. Thanks so much, Chaz. I had uh, such a breadth of opportunities that your office um, offers our students. That's, that's terrific. Um, next, I'd like to welcome Brett Foley uh, from the Office of Veteran Services. Brett? Hi, Stephanie, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Brett Foley. I'm a program coordinator in the Office of Veteran Services. I have a presentation that I will share with you right now. So the mission of our office is to, to facilitate the transition of veterans from military to university life, uh, support the ongoing academic uh, success and assist veterans, guardsmen, reservists, spouses, independents in re receiving their uh, VA education benefits. Um, our office is physically located in the McCarl Center. That's on the first floor of uh, Paws Bar Hall. Uh, we're back into the left. We have our own office inside the center. We have resources for students to use inside of our office, such as computers, printers, um, and access to our uh, student workers as well. Uh, our office is open 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. Um, we have an open door policy. So if a student comes in, if you have questions about utilizing VA education benefits, um, that's the primary uh, funding option that military affiliated students may use while at Pitt, um, please come in. Uh, you don't need to schedule an appointment ahead of time and you can speak to one of our staff members about utilizing the benefits or any other resources that our office can connect you with. Um, just to give you a little bit of a background, the, uh, the population that our office serves, oh, I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself. The population that our office serves uh, are veterans, guard and reservists, active military, uh, dependents of veterans, spouses of veterans, and some ROTC students. Um, like I mentioned earlier, one of our primary functions is the administration of VA education benefits. Uh, the most common benefit is the post 9-11 GI Bill, which is either a uh, benefit that pays out tuition, uh, housing allowance, and book stipend money. Uh, typically, that's available to a veteran, and some veterans have uh, transferred that benefit along to a uh, military dependent or spouse as well. Um, that's our most common benefit. I won't go into any of the other benefits, but if you or somebody that you know uh, feel 
feels that you may be eligible for one of those VA education benefits, please reach out to our office. We'd be more than happy to uh, go over uh, your specific instance with you and see if we can help in any way through the application process. Um, our office offers uh, some specific resources and support. Um, we offer orientations every fall term. Uh, we had about 40 students attend our uh, veteran student and military dependent student orientations in the fall. Uh, and then we try to connect students with other opportunities as well. Uh, we have a one credit course for undergraduate students aiding in the transition from military to university life. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, our, our primary function is a certification of the VA education benefits. Um, we have open office hours and are more than happy to uh, uh, direct students to any sort of resource, both within the university and outside of the university. I will uh, mention a few of those in a minute. Um, we provide some um, unstructured mentorship opportunities. If a student comes into our office and if specific degree program looking to be connected with another student, we will reach out to a student in that program and see if they can uh, connect and share some of their experiences. We offer scholarships and we have a lot of activities uh, with Pitt Athletics. Um, Pitt's going to be doing um, some special event activities heading into the uh, Veterans Day football game this year. And then uh, Pitt Athletics does a great job of connecting our veterans with student athletes Every fall and spring, uh, veterans are able to sit in on one of the practices for the football team and for the basketball team. We just started doing that again uh, this fall. Um, our office offers special events throughout the year. Um, just to touch on a couple of things, in November, we typically do some events around the week of Veterans Day. Uh, those events listed may change um, as we move closer to that this November, but one of them will be some activities involving the Veterans Day football game. Um, and then in the spring term, we typically have a, a breakfast club event where um, members of the Pitt community are welcome to come have breakfast and listen to stories of uh, veteran staff and students on campus where they share their experiences um, while in the military and uh, at the university. So that's a big community building event for us. And then we offer um, some networking events uh, for student veterans as well. We'll be, we'll be holding a networking night in the spring semester. We have various regional partners that we try to connect our students with. Um, two that I specifically wanted to mention, uh, one is the, uh, the Mission Continues. They're a veteran-run service organization that does different service projects in the Pittsburgh area. They have three service platoons, one in Hazelwood, one in Homewood, and one in the South Hills, particularly Mount Oliver. Um, so if you're looking to get connected with uh, a military organization that does service projects, please feel free to reach out to them and uh, look into one of their upcoming opportunities. You do not need to be a veteran to participate. And again, um, we try to connect students with other resources and organizations. Uh, if there is something that they need that's not specifically offered at the university, we're part of a referral network called PA Serves. Um, and they basically have the big Rolodex of veteran services in the Pittsburgh area. So we uh, will connect a student directly with them uh, if there's a specific need that they need to have addressed. And my contact information is available here. Again, my name is Brett Foley. My email is just brettfoley at pitt.edu. If you have any questions, I'll put our website in the chat. Otherwise, thank you so much for having me today. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you, Brett, for sharing all that uh, helpful information for our veterans. Um, next up, I'd like to introduce Laurel Gift, and she's going to talk to us about the Pitt Concern Connection. Thank you, Stephanie. Hi, everybody. I am going to share my screen with you all today. Hey. Uh, all right, I think that should be the right view. Someone will chat with me if it is not. Um, so like I said, my name is Laurel Gift and as Stephanie indicated, I'm here to talk about the Pitt Concern Connection, which is a very important resource. Um, I am relatively new to the university as is my office. Um, I started in, in April of 2020 to start the new Office of Compliance, Investigations and Ethics. And I wanted to tell you all a little bit about that because we do a lot of work across the university. Um, so I've put here the mission of our office and some of the things that we do to meet that mission. 
Um, so we are attempting to support compliance efforts across the university, establish an ethics program. We perform um, a variety of different investigations um, based on some of the reports that come through the Pitt Concern Connection and from other referrals. Um, we strive to make training resources available to university members, which certainly includes all of you. And we look to collaborate with faculty, students, and staff to incentivize ethical behavior across the university. So the Pitt Concern Connection is a hotline um, that really grew out of the COVID Concern Connection, which we started um, when the pand pandemic hit our university. And we had a lot of success with that resource. And so this last May, we expanded it from just a COVID resource to one that's really here to support all of you in whatever concerns you might have across the university. And I'll talk in a moment or two about some of the issues that we're seeing and I'll demonstrate for you all the different departments that use and have access to our system on a regular basis. Um, the primary focus of this resource is to stress, I guess, the importance of asking question and raising issues and concerns with the university community. There's a variety of ways of reporting, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, all reports can be anonymous and we have different levels of anonymity. So you can be completely anonymous to the system or you can be reachable by the third party vendor that maintains this hotline for the university or you can identify yourself. The system can be used really to report any concerns. I've listed some of them here on the slides. Um, there's also an ask a question feature um, so it doesn't have to be a significant concern if you're just unsure about how to identify resources or where to go. Um, we're happy to help link you up with those answers as soon as possible. So as I mentioned, they can be made in a variety of different ways. You can make the report online via text message or call a telephone number that's answered 24 seven by a third party operating service. I'll have those numbers up for you um, in a moment on the slide. And I'll also put links to this reporting resource in the chat after the presentation. So I review the system several times a day and make sure that the appropriate office and individuals are assigned to respond. Um, our goal is an immediate response, but that's not always possible. So we're at least attempting to have some immediate outreach um, and then within three business days, having some more concrete resources available. Um, it's hard for me to tell this group um, what happens because we get a variety of concerns. Sometimes the conduct is really significant and it results in a full investigation that may take some time. Other times it's a question that we can answer within a few hours. Um, so it really just sort of depends on the nature of the concern. We do have a strong practice um, in protecting our students and any of our university members who use our system from any retaliation that might come. We want you to feel that this is a safe place to ask questions and raise concerns. And then the website that my office maintains, I'll also put that in the chat, but it's compliance.pit.edu. And there's a number of resources there linked um, to include our frequently asked questions about the Pit Concern Connection. So here are some of the different ways that you can report. Um, there's the website link there for you. There's a phone number, and then there's also a texting number. I'll put these things in the chat um, and feel free to save them to your contacts so that you have them as a quick and easy resource available to you. Here are just some of the departments that use our system on a regular basis. I'm not gonna read them all out to you, but I just wanted to demonstrate, um, and the real purpose of this slide is to show that we've really covered um, the university as a whole. And so your concerns can um, get to the right people in a really efficient way. And then just by way of example, again, I'm not gonna read all of these out to you, but these are the current issue types that we have um, preloaded into the system that you can select from if you're making a report. And if you're not sure what the issue involves, you can select unknown and I will help sort that out when I get the report, um, usually the same day that you make it. 
So I'm going to stop sharing um, and thank you all for your time. I cannot stress enough um, the fact that we want you to use this system and use it whenever you need it. Um, even if you're uncertain, um, we'd like to link you with the right resources as soon as possible. So thank you very much and thank you, Stephanie. Thanks, Laurel. This is a really great resource for uh, the entire PIT community and we want to make sure that as many students as possible um, know, know about the services and how to, uh, how to report when needed. Um, next, I'd like to welcome Megan, who is going to uh, talk to you about um, where we're incorporating um, this event from Student Affairs in, in the extended um, orientation. And uh, she will talk to you about the Healthy Youth Fair. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I'm going to give a quick run through of some of our student health information, just to have some context of our background, and then I'll um, highlight the Healthy Youth Fair and some other uh, services and information that we have. Um, so uh, my name is Megan Stahl. I'm the health educator here at the University of Pittsburgh. My pronouns are she, hers. I work in um, student health service. Uh, just to give you an overview of where we're at, we're in the Wellness Center. We have a different a variety of different clinical and health promotion type services, the pharmacy, um, we are accredited by the Accreditation Association for Ambulatory Healthcare, um, so we're available for um, students to utilize, including um, graduate and professional level students. As you can see, we have uh, a lot of services uh, from a clinical perspective. Um, so there's a lot of things that we do offer our students, so I just want to highlight and let you know that we are here to help serve you and take care of you. Um, at this time, all services do require an appointment, so appointments can be made by calling our um, number there. Um, you can also leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as possible if, um, you, know, if you prefer. Additionally, um, just to highlight our business hours, we're Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Mondays and Thursdays, we have extended hours until 7 p.m. The last appointment time is at 6.40, and we currently also have 9 to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. And again, just a reminder, all services at this time do require an appointment. Um, our pharmacy is available to support you. We have a number of different um, over-the-counter as well as prescription medications that are available for students. We have a uh, pocket prescription app, um, which is a really useful tool to contact uh, our pharmacy uh, staff to ask any questions or concerns. Um, we have an online pre-order option for over-the-counter type uh, supplies. So you can actually order online or pre-order and then pick them up um, and pay on site. And you can contact them at 412-383-1850 with any questions you might have. Uh, health education promotion, we have quite a few things for our students. Um, as you can see, we have a registered dietitian. We do have some outreach programming on wellness initiatives as well as um, substance education and prevention. Uh, we do have a nicotine cessation uh, program available to students. That's a free cessation counseling um, service that's done one-on-one -on -one for our students. You can contact us at shsohef at pit.edu um, to coordinate any of those types of services or appointments. Oops. Or to next slide. Sorry about that. Uh, we also do have a collegiate recovery program that's available um, for students. To, it's a non-therapeutic support, but we do have um, staff available to meet with students to help uh, focus and support recovery goals for students who might be in recovery for substances. Um, and the stress-free zone, which I'll actually highlight a little bit because uh, I know undergraduates use it a lot, but I do want to highlight this is available for graduate professional students as well. So there are in-class um, in-person classes as well as remote services available, a uh, number of different things. Um, they have meditation yoga spaces, different classes they hold. There's a biofeedback station, massage chair, daylight lamp therapy. Um, they also have audio sessions and information on their website as well. Um, so that is a fantastic resource for students that I just wanna highlight so you know that it is there to help you. Um, if you check out their website, you can find the most updated information as far as their hours of operation and what services and classes they offer. And then finally, the Healthy Youth Fair. So the Healthy Youth Fair, uh, we were very excited to be back this year. So um, due to COVID last year, we were not able to have this event, but this year we are returning. So the Healthy Youth Fair is um, an annual health fair that's um, coordinated by Student Health Service. It brings a variety of different offices and services to students um, in kind of a one area. And we base it off the eight dimensions of wellness. So really the idea is we want students to get connected to a lot of resources and information to support the whole you, right? So a uh, holistic aspect. Um, so there will be the stress-free zone, uh, campus recreation, a number of other offices and apartments there um, to, to connect with you. Um, we'll have free t-shirts, there's raffle prizes and things too as well. So it is a fun event. Um, we're really looking forward to having it return. Um, I wanna highlight some additional things is um, we do have our annual flu shot clinic. This is our official flu shot to kick off in student health service. So um, you can come and bring your PID ID, but you can come and get your uh, free flu shot that day. So um, stop by, we'll be in the Willing Pit Union 
lawn and patio from 10 to 2 next Wednesday, September 29th. Uh, I just got confirmation there should be therapy dogs there as well. Um, so we hope we'll see you there. Um, the other thing that's going on at the same time, the Healthy Youth Fair, is there is a, um, a blood drive through by talent that's going to be inside the union on uh, in dining room A and C. Um, you don't have to have an appointment, but they are recommended. So if you're interested in donating blood at that event, um, you can go to the Central Blood Bank um, website, either select donor login or new donor, use the code CU190042 um, for this event, and you can make an appointment in advance if you'd like to donate at the Healthy Youth Fair as well. So we have quite a number of things that will be there for our students this year, so we hope to see you there. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can contact us. Um, this is the student health number and our website as well. So thank you all for having me. Thank you, Megan. Um, I've attended the uh, Healthy Youth Fair many times and always, um, always learn something new. And for students, it's a great chance to get your flu shot as well when you bring your your pet ID. Um, I just want to say that we're. I just wanted to give you a couple of quick other details and then um, about the grad studies office, and then we will open it up to uh, to questions. So if you if, um, if you have a question, please put it in the Q and A, and we definitely have time to um, to have that question answered. I wanted to just I wanted to provide a few resources from the um, graduate studies office within the provost office. Um, there's our website here. Um, Amanda Godley, who opened up our welcome, has a monthly newsletter. Um, that goes out typically towards the end of the month. Um, she also hosts uh, monthly, out, monthly office hours, which you can sign up online um, to, have a, to have a time slot with her if you want to uh, share any concerns, ask a question, um, or even just, even just to meet her. She loves to um, speak with students. Um, those are also open to postdocs as well. Um, and then we use our Twitter account to help um, to help spread good news about resources um, such as the ones that you have heard from. Um, so I'd like to um, kind of welcome our panel back and ask folks to uh, to join me on screen. Um, I wanted to ask um, Annabelle, can you tell us in, in sort of the theory of some of the uh, outside festivals, can you tell us a little bit more about the Pitt Arts Fest coming up in uh, mid-October? Looks like it's exactly a month away now. So I'm having trouble with my, with my video, I'm sorry. Um, we can hear you and see you. Oh, you can? Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Well, there okay. I am. All right, perfect. <laughs> Yes, the Pit Arts Arts Fest is um, coming up on the uh, 22nd, and it's going to have, we're going to have a couple different artists performing, uh, performing artists there. Uh, I'm working with uh, Mai Koi and her band. They're an incredible, wonderful, um, exciting group, and Mai Koi does this uh, whole um, bad activist uh, program that is really very interesting. And uh, I'm just, you know, communicating with her right while I was, uh, you know, listening to everybody here. Uh, we are also going to have the Boilermaker Jazz Band there. We have students typically that are selling their own art. Uh, we have, uh, you know, graduate students are welcome to, um, you know, sell their art if they have it. Uh, a lot of our graduate students, uh, undergraduate students from, uh, studio arts um, come out and sell their art. We have um, access to um, various um, arts organizations who are there to talk about what they do. And um, it's just a, a great event. And uh, there's a lot of hands-on um, activities for graduate students, professional students, undergraduates, staff, faculty, uh, just everyone. And so it's, it's, a, it's a, an exciting event. And uh, this is probably our, something like our eight or ninth. Um, obviously we're skipping <laughs> last year, um, <clears throat> Arts Fest. So it, it is something that I love to see people come out 
It's going to be on the William Pitt Union lawn, lawns. Now it's the lawns. And um, it, during inclement weather, it'll be inside the William Pitt Union. Thanks so much, Annabelle. Appreciate that update. Um, I also just reposted it. And in case you weren't here when we dropped it in the chat, um, we've compiled a list of uh, graduate student organizations um, that are offered um, and registered through our student affairs office so that people can uh, take a look at some of the graduate students uh, organizations just for uh, graduate professional students that you might want to get involved in. Um, not showing any questions. If anyone, uh, any students out there have some questions, we'd be happy to answer. There's a lot of great resources um, in front of you. Um, I always encourage students to, you know, these, all of these resources are a really good way that you can get out of your, get out of your discipline a little bit, get out of your labs, get out of the library and, and meet some, um, meet some other graduate and professional students from other areas of the university. Um, it's a great, it's a great opportunity to, you know, help lower your stress and also uh, build up your network um, in one of these new opportunities. Um, you know, the, the creativity programs offer a lot of great ways to, um, you know, build, build creative skills that are so important for your graduate work. Okay, anyone wanna offer any, um, any final comments before we... Uh, I'll offer one thing, Stephanie, if you don't mind. Um, so I was a graduate student while an employee at the university from 2015 to 2019 or 2018 in the, uh, the CATS business program. And uh, I was so thankful for the uh, graduate and professional student government for all of the activities and resources that they provided. As, as a student and uh, a full-time worker, it was so great to have other opportunities to connect with other graduate students from all different disciplines at the university and really build a new community. So I just wanted to, um, there's one thing that I took away from my graduate student experience is that there is a community out there to be connected with and actively engaged with. We really appreciate that. I uh, will just chime in to say thank you for that. I Don't be like me and forget that you have to physically account for our time to get somewhere uh now that we are back on campus so uh yeah thank you for that and do get involved with gpsg yes thanks brett thanks morgan we 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 know that our student leaders are also students so it's important that they make it to their other other opportunities well i just want to thank everyone for joining us and i want to especially also thank all of our panelists for being here and sharing all this information. Um, um, all of their slides and this recording will be available online. We will be sharing it to all ground and professional students via um, the Vice Provost newsletter. So we encourage you to uh, share this information with your friends. There's really lots of good resources here. Um, and, you know, and beyond the events coming up, you know, next week and next month, um, all of these organizations have resources for you for the entire year. So have a wonderful day. Thanks again to all the panelists and um, everyone have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>